Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tabacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we have a vintage Windmaster petrol lighter advertising Allen Bradley Distributors Convention in September of 1952. This lighter shows scuffs, scratches, dings, general surface wear. There may be some paint loss, but if there is, it's very minor. The name in the signature, or I should say the paint in the signature here, looks really good. Irv Kaplan. And then the paint on the other side, you can see the finish is a high polish chrome, very mirror-like. And it doesn't appear to be missing any paint from the other side either. The Windmaster is not only a flip-top petrol lighter, but it is also a slip case lighter and that the entire insert lid included comes out of the case which is just a cover for the actual lighter itself it is marked brown and bigelow st paul minnesota made in usa on the one side blank on the other you can see the windscreen is very heavy and plated. I really like the script in the etching there in the way that the windscreen is spelled out. Really I think is a, a style of the times. It's not the most fancy lighter with just the high polished chrome and then the black sort of creating a two-tone. It's a lot nicer than, say, the cheap screen printed gas station lighters that you saw in the 80s and 90s. It is a pretty deep etched and pretty thick looking paint. The finish is excellent. The lighters are, everything's in alignment. There's nothing really cheap about it. Even the fact of the way that the hinge is attached seems kind of odd, but um, in the end, that the way it's kind of floated in the back there works, and I haven't had an issue with it. It has these really cool raised triations on the front of the lid to give your thumb purchase as you lift it. Seems to work very well. I was really worried about this lighter when I was clearing it out and getting it working, because it didn't seem like it was throwing a lot of sparks. But when I got around to making this video, it was igniting a whole lot better than I uh, figured that it was going to. There is a pad in the bottom of all the cases on these Windmaster lighters. I wasn't aware of that when I got this first one, so I had to go check the ones that I had in there in the salvage room. And sure enough, there's a, an extra felt pad. So it was full of sawdust and then two felt pads in the insert. And then another slimmer felt pad in the bottom of the case. So I would think that all of that would help promote fuel efficiency anyway. Whether or not that actually translates into the real world, who knows. You can see the spring that is employed to keep the insert into or inside that case. You can also see here now the wick and the wadding that I replaced all that old sawdust and the broken down degraded wick that was in there before. The front side reads AB quality Allen Bradley Distributors Convention, September 15th through the 18th, 1952, Nipper Sink Manor. I looked that up and I really couldn't find anything at all on Allen Bradley Distributors. Nipper Sink Manor is a resort 
or golf course in Genoa City, Wisconsin, that I believe you can get a tea time as we speak. This slider cleaned up really well. You can see where that file wheel has a cover over it that there is a slot in the back that allows the sparks to go through but as far as the front goes it is smooth as you run your finger over it. I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of that is, if that's a safety thing, somebody sued somebody or what. The hinge pin is pretty well hidden very hard to see those back there and I'm not exactly sure of how this mechanism all works together for that hinge to sort of free float like that it's not exactly free floated there is a a pin an actual hinge pin but how it all actually ties in together I'm not going to take it apart and find out I'll leave that for my friend Stuart Linton to do and then he can report back how it goes now that I say that, that's probably the next question I'm going to get in the email or under, in, underneath the video in the comments. So I might want to set about going ahead and figuring out how that hinge is fixed to the top of that light. I assumed Irv Kaplan was a distributor for Alan Bradley, but when I did a little Google search, the name came up as a government official or a former government official who was born in 1923 and actually still alive. I doubt if there would be a government official's name on a uh, wholesale distributor's advertising lighter, but I just thought it was interesting that that name came up. That name was also associated with a television director but I think it is more likely that our fellow here, Irv Kaplan, was somehow involved with whatever it was that AB distributors distributed or the putting on of their convention, which I don't know if that was a yearly convention. It says September 15th to 18th, 1952. So ran for four days. I'm sure Irv and his distributor buddies were having a well of a time. Or maybe he was telling them about all the espionage that he got involved with in his work for the government. Or maybe he was telling them about the television series that he was getting ready to direct here in a couple of decades. <laughs> Until next time.